Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a hanging pot holder, which is not only very decorative, but makes a great gift. So let's look at a sample of what I'm going to make, all right? I just love this pot holder. I think it's so cute and so pretty. In fact, it's almost too pretty to even use, all right, but it's very usable. So I've selected this pink flower to put up in the corner here of the pot holder. And I used a pink border here that matches the pink in the flower. Then I selected the green to use as my binding that also acts as a frame and makes this great little loop for hanging on the wall or on your stove or on your refrigerator. Like I said, a great little gift. Now, before we get started in assembling in the pot holder, let's look at the fabrics that you will need to cut out. Your green fabric that I use on the bottom and the binding, the bottom is, is a seven and a half inch square. And then the binding is two and three quarter inches by 40 inches. Then my flower fabric, and by the way, you can use whatever you want for this piece, is five and a quarter by five and a quarter inch square. And then you'll need two more, two pieces of pink fabric. One is two and three quarters by five and a half inches. And the other one is two and three quarters by seven inches. And then you will need two squares of cotton batting, a seven inch square, or use one layer of Inselbright and one layer of cotton batting. So this is what you need to have cut. Now, by the way, this is a seven and a half inch pot holder. You can make it any size you want. You'll just need to make whatever adjustments are necessary if you choose to make it a different size. All right, after you've cut your binding out, you wanna fold it in half and press it with your iron the full length of the strip. And after you've done that, just set it aside for later. And now let's look at how to assemble your top piece. Okay, so I've taken that flower square and I've taken my first piece of pink, which is two and three quarters by five and a half, and lay it on one edge and do a quarter inch seam allowance, just stitch right along there. Then with your iron, you wanna press and then push this across in that direction and press again. Then take your next strip, which is two and three quarters by seven and a half, and lay it down, pin it down, and again, do that one quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. Then press it with your iron, then fold it over in that direction, and press one more time. Okay, after you've uh, assembled your top piece, Let's look at layering everything together so we can get ready to do our quilting stitches. So here is my green fabric. I'm gonna lay that down with the right side facing down and the wrong side facing up. Then my two layers of cotton batting or whatever insulation you choose to use. Then take your top piece and lay that down. Line it all up really good and smooth it out, okay? And then we're gonna go and do the top stitching. So before we do the top stitching, I wanna go over this walking foot. If you've been following me and watching my videos, you know that I have talked about this several times, but if you're new and you really don't know what it is, this is used in quilting and it's used for sewing on multiple layers of fabric and it helps to keep it all together so they don't stretch and slip and slide everywhere. If you don't have one of these, you can still do it with a regular pressure foot, but you will need to use a few more pins to hold all your layers together. So if you don't have one, I recommend sometime in the near future you purchase one, you will absolutely love it, okay? Now, let's look at the top stitching that I did on this pot holder, okay? This is a quilting stitch. If you don't have this stitch on your machine, just use a straight stitch. You can still get great results. So don't worry if you don't have this one. Or use whatever quilting stitch you want. Start in this corner 
and go down to that corner and then you're going to work your way out always start in the center and work out then go over a few inches do it again and again go over a few inches and do another row then go over to the other side and do the same thing then to get that crisscross effect turn the pot holder and repeat it go down this center and then work your way out so that it looks like this okay if you don't have this quilting stitch this is what it looks like with a straight line all right see you can get great results no matter which one you are using all right let's begin to put on the binding all right you're going to place your binding on this raw edge here and here so line it up pin it down and then I do a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance so stitch all the way down okay when you get 3 8 of an inch away from this edge here you're going to stop leave your needle down press your foot up turn the pot holder and stitch right into that corner okay then take it out of your machine and we're going to now do a folding process to get that nice mitered corner all right you want to line your edge of a binding up right along this edge don't pull it this way and don't pull it that way it needs to be straight out then finger press it a little bit pull the binding strip over line it up along the edge okay then make sure that this folded edge is in alignment with that raw edge then begin pinning your next edge down so pin all along here then do your 3 8 of an inch seam allowance start right here at the edge go all the way down and when you get to the next corner repeat that little stitch into the corner you're going to do this on three corners not four just three corners only all right now I'm going to show you how to finish up the last side when you get to this last side here and you're coming to where you started flip the pot holder over and pin it on the back make sure you pull it past the stitching line all you need to do is just put one pin okay then go back to the front lay your strip of binding across pin it down and continue stitching now stitch all the way down go up and over that bottom piece of binding and stop right here at the edge go all the way across now we're going to cut off the excess binding so i'm going to line it up here on my little grid line pull it out and you're going to count over four and a half inches so one two three four and a half and cut it right here okay all right now your next step is we're going to prepare that loop or excuse me yes prepare the loop for uh, prepare the binding for the loop all right now this is what I did to get it to look like this we're going to take this one little step at a time here so you understand it okay now I cut a little square out here don't go past this fold line you want to leave an eighth of an inch to a fourth of an inch left here okay then you're going to take this raw edge and fold it in so that it looks like that and use your iron through this whole process press it down then you're going to take this bottom edge and fold it over like that then you're going to take the two folded edges and bring them together like this and remember press on each step of the way don't try to fold the whole thing together and then press it because it'll it'll turn out really bad you won't like it so one step at a time all right now after you've done that we're going to start pinning from the back all right I usually start over here and begin pinning across and then when I get to this corner I'll put a pin just before the corner and right after the corner and to get that nice mitered fold I use a straight pin press down and in 
fold over and pin. Okay? Do this mitered corner fold on three corners. When you get down to this last one, you're going to just continue pinning through here. All right, there's no mitered corner on this side. All right, your next step is to flip it back over to the front and you're going to do stitch in the ditch. Now quilters out there, you know what that is. But if you're new to this, stitch in the ditch is where two pieces of fabric come together, the black and the green, and you're going to stitch right down here where they meet, right there in that ditch. I'm going to use green thread on this because it matches my binding, but I'm going to stitch on the black and the pink. And when I flip it over, it matches the binding on the back. Okay, so you're going to start up here, stitch all the way down to get to this corner, leave your needle down and press your foot up, turn the pot holder and stitch down this way and continue doing that until you get back to where you started. Now, you in here, then you move the pot holder over just a little bit and stitch up on top here and then continue stitching all the way down to the end here. We're getting close to being done. Okay, now we're gonna make that loop. Leave this part facing up. Don't twist it, okay? Leave it facing up. Then you're going to push it around like this. And then you're going to pin it on the back. So let me show you what that looks like. So flip it over and pin it on the back. Then flip it back over to the front. And you're going to do this neat little square stitch here. Let me get my other one out so you can see that. Okay, here's this square that I have made. Now, bef before you remove the pin, you want to put your needle down in and go back and forth a couple of times. Then take the needle, the, excuse me, the pin. Then take the pin out because it's really difficult to do this little square with that pin in the way. So secure everything first, remove the pin, then go over three or four stitches, then back up this way, and then this way, and then this way. And leave your needle down, press your foot up every time you come to the corner so you can turn it. And then go back and forth here a couple of times to secure it. And then you have completed one hanging Pot holder. Isn't that cute? I just love it. It's too cute to even use, but you can use it. Now, for those of you who are quilters, you're very familiar with the term orphan blocks, and that's where you have a few blocks left over from a previous project. I use my orphan blocks in pot holders. So here's a little pinwheel that I put up in the corner, and then this was a paper piecing heart from a baby quilt I made. And then I had a leftover flower fabric. And then I made a table runner for Thanksgiving and I had some little turkeys left over. I put two borders around that one. And then of course, don't forget Christmas. So you can see you have a lot of choices out there. Now, I hope that was helpful, but here is what I'm gonna make in my next video. This is an oven mitt can also be a pot holder but an oven mitt it protects the back of your hand and again I used my scrap fabrics to make this and it's also got a little loop here so that's in my next video so to keep informed on all my future videos click on subscribe that's that red bold letters at the bottom of the screen when you click on subscribe YouTube will ask you if you want to receive an email notification. Click on yes, enter your email address, and when you receive that email, there's a big button in the center of the email. You click on that and it takes you directly to my next video. I'm Cheryl. I'm really glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing.